scanning for audio. Welcome to a Tin Dog Podcast, this time talking about, well, the new TV Doctor Who, Praxis. Hey kids, you know that huge surprise that just happened at the last episode? That was like earth shattering and really important. Let's not mention it whatsoever during this story. Now I get Monsters of the Week, right? I do. I'm a massive Buffy fan. I I like old fashioned Doctor Who, where it wasn't exactly Monster of the Week, it was Monster of the Quarter. Does that make sense? Well, Monster of the Month. But if something like this happens, you really kind of need to mention it a bit. Right, before I talk about the episode, I've had a thought. Bear with. So, Dr. Ruth turns up. Oh dear, she can't be Dr. Zero, right? Because her TARDIS happens to look like a police box. However, here's a thought. Imagine that that's not a Type 40 TARDIS. That's not the Doctor's TARDIS. That's a TARDIS that belongs to the Doctor. This is a Doctor before they get their mind wiped. Okay? Yeah, you with me? And then, there's the storyline that happens. The timeless child happens to be, oh, I don't know, Susan. Right? The Doctor's granddaughter, regardless of gender, it's still granddaughter, and a child who needs to escape from Gallifrey, yeah, and still has their mind right but needs to escape, and eventually the Doctor steals a Type 40, oh it's my thief, runs off, and the TARDIS gets stuck in the police box form, and because that person has a memory that's been wiped, but it's still a memory of liking the police box form, they leave it be. Does that make sense? That kind of fills in all the blanks and it doesn't leave anything left over. It allows for the sonic screwdriver routine. It allows for the police box looking like the 60s but different. And it allows for a whole host of other things that's really not worth going into. So perhaps that's just a thought. Perhaps I'm just talking nonsense. But I'll get back to the whole Chibnall tries to rectify the past and makes things work at the end. So, if you enjoyed this story this week, and some people did, I know some people really did, uh, I suggest you go to Big Finish and buy Sargasso, which has a very, 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 very similar plot. Except, of course, it's better because it's got the Autons in it. That's the Autons. Plastic-based life forms that happen to live in the swirly bit of ocean-based rubbish that sits in the middle of the ocean and so on and so on. Yes, some people out there would love to see the whole Praxis versus Autons storyline and an Autons sense sphere, you know, the big control unit that lives in the centre of Autons, looked so much like the big glowy sphere thing that Yaz found that everyone in the whole world who's an old school fan just went, hey, it's the Autons and it wasn't. It really wasn't. And it should have been, but it wasn't. Because it was all about a disease. So, here's a question. Is plastic pollution the big villain of this series? Ignore all of the other monsters. Just think of that. In the way that, say, season six of Buffy had no real monster apart from real life. And that made it rubbish. But we can discuss that another time. Should I do a Buffy podcast? I'm guessing I should, you know, a nice rewatch 20 odd years later. But that's not important. What is important is that it wasn't the Autons. It was a disease. No, it was some birds. No, it wasn't. It was something happened that turns everyone into sand or teeth. But it's not Tim Shaw. Thank God it's not Tim Shaw. Here's the thing. And yes, I'm all over the place, but bear with me. 
this week I didn't get to watch Doctor Who until Tuesday night. I didn't listen to any podcasts. I didn't look at any social media whatsoever. I'm only on Twitter. But you get what I mean. I just thought, don't bother. Is it because I'm just not as into this series of Doctor Who as possible? My wife didn't care at all. In fact, I asked her why she didn't want to watch it, and she just said, it's not Geordie, it's not the performances, it's just the... It's just the enthusiasm. She just can't take it anymore. The Doctor's been through so much. And yet the Doctor's just so bloody enthusiastic about everything. It's all one note of a performance. Arguably, the series has shot itself on its foot last week. You see, originally, we all kicked off and went, Oh, no, it's a female Doctor. Or, yay, it's a female Doctor. And then we got Jodie. Yeah. But last week... We got a female doctor, a dark one, a brooding one, a one with plans, a one who was carrying a gun but wasn't prepared to use it, a one with glasses, a great costume and a fantastic TARDIS. Basically, it was like the end of the old game show Bullseye when they came out and going, here's what you could have won. And you know what? I've spent all week thinking, I just want to watch that Doctor Who instead. I want to watch the episodes of Ruth Doctor in Space, Doctor Zero or Doctor Three Replacement Service. That's what I want to watch. That's the Doctor Who series I'm really into. The series that we haven't got. Yes, I know what happens at this time of year. Whenever Doctor Who's on TV, I always listen and experience a lot more Big Finish than usual. Because that's where my heart really belongs. That's where the challenging narratives are. That's where the interesting ways of seeing the universe are, the twisted experiences, all of those bits of experimental narrative, because Doctor Who's too big now to fail, so they just play it safe. And that's what we've got. We've got somebody playing a version of Tenant in front of us. So my wife is indeed correct. So the villains are in fact aliens using the Earth as, well, a petri dish, as it's said. And then they talk about pathogens and It was interesting because I have done a little bit of research and a lot of people in the States are going, oh no, why are they having to explain what a pathogen is? And there's several reasons. One, it's a family show and a kids show, but mostly because, well, let's put it this way, the actual definition of a pathogen, all we hear in the UK is that, oh, pathogen means bad. Is it something that causes cancer? Is it something that causes a cold? Is it just poisonous? If pushed... Most of us would just go, not 100% certain, knows it's bad. And yet, the Americans all seem to know exactly, precisely what it is, and think, "Mm, how can you possibly not know? And it's interesting, because normally on the educational front, we're doing it the other way around. But I suspect we've been dumbed down for a while. And I sort of pride myself on having a reasonably high IQ. But this... I just didn't quite know 100% what it was. Knew it was bad, but I didn't know precisely the definition. And perhaps that's a failing of mine. Well, in fact, I know it is. So Doctor Who setting out to educate and inform is good. Don't knock it. It's important. Especially in a world that's out to get the BBC. Because trust me, that's happening and it is coming. One thing that has annoyed me a bit about this whole series is that there hasn't been a huge amount of development of the, well, the companions. Yes, Bradley is a great actor, so he knows what's coming, he knows what's there, and he gets to do all his acting through the reacting acting, where somebody else is doing the nice storytelling, but he gets to steal the scene just with a look. Adam and Jake uh, having their chat about uh, their relationship is ideal, because what you actually get in that whole scene is Graham going, oh yeah, that's exactly what it was like for my wife. She's dead now, but I always felt better. That All that, you get the whole thing just from his expressions. He doesn't get to say these things. That's the nearest we've had to character development. And the bizarre thing for me is that as a podcaster, I've been around for a while. Nobody ever recognises us. We're just voices. As far as you're concerned, I could be a 28 stone um, Jabba the Hutt impersonator or could be six and a half foot tall. 
none of these things matter because it's just my personality talking directly to yours god knows what i actually look like in your head with my accent probably a minor i'll leave it there but vloggers they go mm, i'm famous i've got my own channel and that level of self-importance was evident here it was beautiful to view I did find some of the characters slightly annoying. Some of the things they were saying. Hey, my friend who I've been doing this important show with just vanished. Oh, look, here's some muscles for me to feel. Felt just crass. In fact, it would have worked better if it had been twisted round and reversed and turned the other way. Or even if they'd said, if I wasn't in some sort of dire emergency, I'd pass comment on that. But I am, or something, some way of experiencing it a different way. And then, of course... You've got the whole plastic thing and you've got all that business. But for me, the whole episode comes down to one major moment. The Adric-shaped elephant in the room. And this, of course, refers back to Ruth. Bear with, because this is important. Imagine being a kid, because let's face it, Chibbers is the same age as me. Adric dies. You know the series is based on um, a time traveller. Right. If you were eight when Adric gets killed, it leaves an impression, a scar on you. But also as you grow older and you're a fan, you start thinking, well, it's a time machine. He's got very good at hops. He could just turn up, grab Adric, put him in the TARDIS and take him away. Why can't he do this? And I know in the next episode, there's a whole thing about, oh, no, we couldn't possibly go back and save Adric. But you know that there's no genuine reason for that not to happen. So... In story, the Doctor has thought about how he could have saved Adric, and then when he becomes Jodie and sees the opportunity to save Adric, he does. Jumps in, scoops up, leaves. Works, yeah? Chibnall point of view. Hey, this is a massive problem with the storylines of Doctor Who. I'm going to go back and fix them. And that's what happens here. He retroactively repairs the Adric hole with this m scoop and save movement. Yes, I know as a podcaster I should be going on about how marvellously portrayal the actual marriage between the two characters, the astronaut and the policeman was, and I get all that. That's what I should be talking about. But I'm an old school Doctor Who fan. So what I'm going to do is reference something that happened when I was eight. I'm going to reference Adric dying because that was where the importance was. Sod the bird effects, sod the character exploding into dust or the people on board the rubbish submarine or anything like that. No, I'm going to fixate on Adric because that's who I am. Please forgive me. So perhaps my wife's right and perhaps Doctor Who is even less for us than we thought. I just don't know. I just know that it took me days to get around to watching it and I wasn't missing it half as much as I thought because I had big finish to fall back on. Is this a good sign or not? Or is it just the truth? I just don't know. But either way, next week we've probably got some sort of horror historical. Possibly. So until next time, be seeing you. That was the Doctor Who Tin Dog Podcast. Available on iTunes, YouTube, Twitter, RSS, Vimeo and across the internet. Doctor Who and its associated properties are all copyright and trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. Why not become a supporter by visiting patreon.com slash tin dog. Contact the show on tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. 